Hello, and welcome to another SprueCam tutorial brought to you by SprueCam America. In this tutorial, I will show you how to index and transform toolpaths on a tombstone using the fourth axis. You'll see here that I've got four models. Um, they're identical, and I just placed them around the tombstone, which you can attach to a fourth axis. So what I first need to do is to check to see if my fourth axis is actually enabled on the machine definition. So I'm going to turn on the machine and look, and no it's not. It's sitting there in the table. So we need to turn that on. Uh, you want to highlight your machine. You'll hopefully be doing this before you've created any operations. Otherwise, just make sure you click this. And you're going to come down here and hit Tooling. And where it says Axis X Table Selector, Hit that down and go to horizontal axis A. Now I've already moved this ahead pre beforehand. Um, and I went over this in a previous video. But in order to move around, you just highlight this little setup here where it says global coordinate system. You can move this around, you know, wherever you want to go. But I found 10 inches with this works, so I went with it. Hit OK. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn that off so it speeds up a little bit, and we are going to just do a roughing pass on, on this part. Um, this is just for demonstration. I'm not going to go through this entire part, but just to show you guys the gist of it. There's two ways we can do this. The first I will do show you is indexing. So we'll just do a roughing waterline. Um, let's see, let's set this as the top level. Top level, let's set this as the bottom level. All right, let's go in here, bring him over, go to tool, and let's just use a, oh, what do we want to use here? I'll use an eighth inch, let's get a lot of tool paths going. Feeds and speeds, don't need that. Parameters, we'll say quantity of two. Hit OK. Now I'm actually curious. OK, yep, there we go. And let's hit run. All right, so we've got a bunch of toolpaths there. All right, well now we want to do it on this one as well. So what we need to do and what I like to do is just hit copy, come down here, right click it again, and hit paste. So now we've got a second operation. We can just delete these, hit yes, come back to setup, and where it says A axis position down here, we want to put 90 degrees and hit enter so now what you can do is you can look here at this little coordinate system in the middle there and you'll see that's pointing this way and now the tool is as well so we know that that was the positive 90 degree rotation so now we're facing this way and we'll do the same thing we'll hit this top level under job assignment and we'll hit the bottom level and hit run. So now you see we got two of them there. Now we can do the same thing. I'm going to speed through these a little bit here. So copy, paste, and I'll just do the same thing again. Copy, paste. So for the third one, we want it to be 180. Fourth one, we want that to be 270. All right, we can come in here, delete out these. Looking at that coordinate system, so this is the one we're working on. Top level, bottom level. Let's go down to this one. Look, oh, we're going that way now, so we'll go this way. Top level, 
and bottom level. All right, I'm just going to hit reset and run. All right. So we can now go to the simulation. Ooh, let's modify that. There we go. You can see there's uh, there's our models. Let's get them off transparent, make them solid. All right. I can turn the fixture off. Up there, I imported this in as an actual model, but you can import it as a fixture. Uh, and let's let's run this and see what happens. So let's get this positioned correctly. All right. Turn the toolpath off. Don't go in too far. There we go. Right about there looks good. All right. Turn that off, and we will make this non-transparent so you guys can watch it do its thing. And now remember, this is just a, just a roughing pass just to kind of show you guys. Um, obviously, I'd probably be using a bigger end mill than an eighth inch, but go through here quick. Get it to where it shows it rotating. rotated and on to the next so that's one way we can do it I'm gonna stop it there go up here and I'll just do a quick simulate through it so simulate 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 all right so we've got four identical parts so that's one way to do it um, I would personally use it do it this way and just do everything on one one side, then flip it, and then do it all over again. So you'd have a you know roughing waterline, 2D contour, home machining, and they'd all have zero for an angle, and then go to the next one, they'd all have 90, so on and so forth. There's another way that you can do this though, and it's a little bit quicker. What you can do is I'm going to delete all all of these except for one. So we've just got this guy right here. Let's say you're just doing one op. You've got 100 parts on this side, you got got 100 parts on this side, and all you're doing is just spot drilling. You're putting a chamfer on it. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to stick with the roughing water line. But what you can do is, once you've got it looking how you want it to, in this case, with the roughing water line pass, you double-click roughing water line. You go to Transformation. And where it says Multiply Toolpath by Axes, you hit that down, you hit copying. In this case, we're going to want to rotate, so we're going to use the A axis. Once you do use A axis, the multiply step is no longer in inches, but degrees. So you would put 90 degrees. And then the multiply count is how many times you want to do this. In this case, four. I'll just hit OK and then run. And there you go. Just multiply them all around there. And that concludes another SprueCam tutorial brought to you by SprueCam America.